you're going to hear me do a little YouTube for John Gates in a second and after it is a really interesting SBS report on Caroline Kennedy. Mr. Terrace Park and John Gates, the principal petitioner in relation to the World War II Coast Watchers Place petition, has asked me to come down to Newstead Terrace Park to film what it looks like from Newstead Terrace Park and upriver where the camera is currently pointing is where the Submariners Heritage Walk Trial is and at that location is where the submarines used to pick up the coast watchers and take them into harm's way and down this stretch of the river which is the Hamilton stretch just around the corner is where the flying boats used to pick up the coast watchers and put them into harm's way and so therefore John's thoughts as to the location of the World War II coast watchers is ideal because it is midway between the two and Brisbane has had such a key role to play in the coast watchers narrative uh, and John, I'm hoping that uh, that satisfied your uh, request. Preparing for a swim, 80 years in the making. US Ambassador Caroline Kennedy and son Jack wade in to cross a stretch of water almost a kilometre wide. The current's strong, the surf scattered with jellyfish, recreating just one of the many swims by John F. Kennedy between these islands while shipwrecked in the Second World War. August 1, 1943, US patrol boat PT-109, captained by Kennedy, is rammed in pitch black by a Japanese destroyer, killing two crew. Kennedy led the survivors to what was then Plum Pudding Island, now named in his honour. His daughter, the first Kennedy to walk these sands since. Well, it's a really an incredibly emotional experience for me and for my son, and I'm so lucky to be able to to be here and to thank the community and the families of the Solomon Scouts. JFK was found by two Islander Scouts working with the Allies. They carried his message, carved in a coconut, to Australian Coast Watcher Lieutenant Reg Evans, who organised their rescue. Eight decades later, the descendants of those Scouts came from across Solomon Islands to welcome his daughter on her first visit to this region. That one day, he will come and visit them. Visit them and somehow he didn't make it and his daughter is here so we are very happy to have him here. But I would not be here without the Coast Watchers who saved my grandfather and the Australians who saved my grandfather. Exchanging gifts in a ceremony to honour their bravery and remember the fallen. You're coming to our beautiful Solomon Islands, especially Western Province is a milestone even that always will be treasured. For Ambassador Kennedy, this is not just an opportunity to explore her father's history. This is an opportunity for the United States to have meaningful cultural engagement with the Solomon Islands people. These kinds of communities are quite distant, but the US has never really lost touch with, with many of the Pacific Islands. We have many Pacific Islanders in the United States. For Ambassador Kennedy, it means experiencing traditions firsthand, whether it be paddling as the Scouts did in the Second World War, or drawing on their knowledge to cross the waters. How was it down there? Oh, it was great. Hoping to further a connection that's lasted decades. Naveen Razik, SBS World News.